What is up everybody, Dan again, StockTrades.ca. Welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I have a very interesting ETF for you. It's only about a month or so old right now. It's from Evolve and it's an artificial intelligence ETF that has a very unique spin on how it constructs its portfolio because it actually utilizes artificial intelligence to help it make decisions when it comes to portfolio allocations, stocks, things like that. So I'm going to dig into the fund. There's not going to be as much in-depth information as previous videos, just because this fund hasn't been around for that long. So I can't exactly get, you know, a lot of historical data, uh, valuations, etc. But I'm going to go over the fund's strategy, how it uses AI moving forward in terms of its active management, and my overall outlook on the this fund because to be honest, Canada is significantly lacking in terms of AI ETF development relative to the United States. There's lots of large scale US uh, AI ETFs, but in Canada, we really only have a select few and I'm going to discuss those in a relatively short order in this video because I do have videos on them previously and I'll link to them when I start to talk about them. But with that said, let's dive right into it. All right, everybody, before we get started, uh, head down below, like the video, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, our No BS newsletter two times a week. And if you sign up below, you're going to get information on a new ETF platform we are launching. It will be very similar to our Stock Trades Premium platform, but it will be solely focused on ETFs, uh, a more passive style of investing. And if you're interested in a platform like that, if you're looking to get research on the 5,000 plus exchange traded funds that are on the market today. I mean, there's going to be more ETFs in North America than there is going to be stocks relatively soon. So we kind of felt the need to provide a platform for those who are not interested in picking individual stocks, but also don't necessarily have the time or knowledge to dive into the absolute mountainous amount of ETFs available today. So if you're interested in a platform like that, head down below, join the no BS newsletter and you're going to get into the newsletter, but also filled in on this platform launch, which is expected to come in either mid to late May. So it's coming very soon. But with that said, let's dive right into this brand new ETF. All right. So what exactly is the Evolve Artificial Intelligence ETF? It trades under the ticker ARTI.TO. And as you can see, this is a very new fund. So it debuted on, it looks like YChart started tracking data on March 27th, 2024. So the fund has only been around for for a month or so, uh, April wasn't really a good time for the markets, especially higher valued AI type stocks. So as a result, it has drawn down a bit, but I mean, performance 30 days in is, is completely irrelevant. The one thing is this fund only has 2.3 million in assets under management. Like I said, it is brand new. There is not a lot of Canadian based AI ETF uh, elements. I believe we have the Horizons Big Data ETF, which I have covered before, and I will leave a link at the top of this video here for you to go watch that. But even that fund is primarily focused on, you know, cryptocurrency. They have a lot of crypto exposure, and they also are more exposed to the data end of things, which has resulted in it absolutely crushing it as of late. I mean, if we look to actually, I'll go to a uh, our KPI chart and I'll just show you uh, NVIDIA's data center revenue growth. Um, it's absolutely insane. And keep in mind, we have pretty much all of these KPIs available to our uh, premium members over on Stock Trades Premium. These are pretty difficult to find KPIs. You got to dig into the quarterly reports, all that type of stuff. We have it available for them. But if you go to quarterly basis, NVIDIA, in terms of data center revenue, I mean, look at this growth. It's absolutely insane. They've gone from even, you know, April 2023, 4.2 billion in data center revenue to $18.4 billion uh, in January 2024. I don't expect this to slow down at all. This fund has more of a broad AI focus. It's not uh, too particular on the data center side of things. There's no cryptocurrency exposure in here. It's, it's more so pure play AI and it focuses on, you know, product development, data centers, uh, 
all that type of stuff and not solely one specific area. So with there being a, you know, with this being a brand new fund, I don't really have too much to go off on Y charts. I mean, when we go to the holdings, they don't even have the holdings available. This fund is so new. So what I will do instead is focus on the fact sheet of the fund here. We can see that the fund is relatively, you know, the assets under management are relatively the same as Y charts, 2.3 million. We can see it contains 58 uh, active holdings. But the one interesting thing here, so this is an actively managed fund. However, it utilizes boosted.ai for its portfolio selection. It at least helps. Uh, it uses boosted.ai to help. And what exactly is boosted.ai? Well, it's pretty much an investment management platform that helps fund managers make portfolio allocation decisions. They help them make stock decisions, what stocks to own in the portfolio. I mean, when we look at uh, the features here, we can see boosted.ai uses proprietary algorithms to sort winning stocks from losing ones. Every stock in your universe gets tested against each other variable by variable, helping you isolate high value trade ideas. Uh, Boosted.ai is customizable to your specific portfolio and investment universe. Our algorithm makes personalized recommendations based on your existing holdings, risk profile, and investing style, and even AI research. So cut hours from your research by letting our large language models search tens of thousands of new sources, earnings data, company filings, all this type of stuff. So Evolve is utilizing this platform to what extent I'm not exactly sure to help it with its decision making. So I would say the on the investment side of things, like you know, AI platforms that help you research stock, pick stocks, we're very, very early in the infancy here. So I'm really curious as to how this fund will perform utilizing a platform like this to actually uh, grow and outperform. I mean, there's a lot of speculation right now in regards to utilizing AI to actually make investment decisions. So for this, I'm actually very curious to see how this is going to work out for the fund. Now, one thing that I could see this, you know, helping this fund for, and don't get me wrong, I don't actually think that Evolve is just solely using this AI platform to, to make decisions for them. They're simply utilizing it to possibly save them time, give them better ideas, things like that. And this could have an added effect on the industry if this actually gets quite popular of possibly lowering fees. You have to think if investment advisors, if AI can supplement research accurately and you know, to an extent where it is very valuable information, very accurate information, I could see this actually being able to trim down fees in the actively managed world, at least obviously with an index fund, this would be completely irrelevant. They're simply buying the index and holding it. But on, a, on an active level management, if these platforms develop, they grow, they become more accurate, they become more complex, uh, people learn to trust them a lot more. This could end up trimming down ETF fees because fund managers might not have to dedicate the same amount of time in order to find promising ideas, popular strategies, things like that. Now, obviously, again, we're very early game here, but I think it's really unique that Evolve is actually utilizing this platform. I'm very interested to see how this works out over the long term. Now, before I dive into the holdings uh, management fees, things like that, I guess I should reiterate one important thing. I would not be looking to necessarily add this fund right now. I mean, this is a brand new fund utilizing this platform. It's taking a very unique approach to uh, AI stocks, creating a ETF of AI stocks on an actively managed fund, especially one that is utilizing something like this. I would probably just want to wait a bit and see how it performs. But I figured it's so unique that, you know, I thought I would bring it to people's attention so that maybe, you know, this is definitely going on my watch list. And I want to see how this fund performs over time and to just see if not only the AI space in general, but utilizing somewhat of an AI platform to help make uh, fund managers decisions easier. I want to see how it performs. So this has been firmly on my watch list since I discovered it. Would I be buying it right now? No, not necessarily. This would probably be the same with any actively managed fund, unless the fund managers of the fund had a very long history of providing solid returns in other funds that they've managed. A passive index fund is pretty cut and dry. You can look at the historical performance 
performance of that index, and you could pretty much predict that the returns of that fund will be relatively stable to that index, but actively managed funds are very unique in the fact that it's active management. This is a management team selecting, I mean, in this case, a management team and an AI platform selecting individual stocks. So there is the element of human error here. So I tend to wait until there's longer history in terms of actively managed funds. So now that we've discussed that, let's dig into the actual holdings of this fund. And, you know, first off, who should consider this ETF? I guess I should go over before holdings. Uh, seeking to invest in global securities that will benefit from increased adoption of AI. Uh, this is fairly obvious for a fund like this. It um, It's an AI ETF. So willing to take on the risk associated with equity investments. This is even more amplified in the AI space. Valuations are sky high. I would call a lot of these stocks price to perfection. That's kind of the term I like to say. They're all expensive. They need to keep putting up steady growth or you could see large drawdowns in the space. I'm a bit more bullish on the AI space just because of the sheer growth of the industry over the last while. So uh, valuations are high, but I would expect growth to continue at quite a big pace moving forward. So keep seeking capital appreciation through exposure to equity securities. I highly doubt this fund is going to pay any distribution. I know it does state at some point in this fact sheet that their distributions will be paid on an annual basis, but it says if applicable, uh, I wouldn't expect many uh, eligible dividends to come from this fund. I would imagine most of the distributions, if they give one out, would be structured as a capital gain. But again, that's just pure speculation by me. Uh, historical prices, we don't have any historical prices. It's only been around for, it looks like early March. So as I mentioned here, distribution frequency annual, if applicable, uh, we have a management fee of 0.6%. This is actually cheap. Um, a lot of these niche funds, I mean, last week I went over uh, ZRE and I'll, I'll leave a link in the video. That's a REIT ETF. You can uh, go over to BMO REIT ETF. They have a higher management fee than this AI ETF. And typically what you'll see with, you know, first off ETFs that are just starting up, they have relatively low assets under management. So typically fees will be higher. And once the AUM grows, they can generally lower the fees because it's, you know, the more assets under management they have, the more money they're collecting, the lower fees can get. But this fund is relatively new. I would have expected the fees to be quite a bit higher than this, but it's actually pretty reasonable. I mean, it has lower fees than, you know, a $600 million REIT ETF and ZRE. That's around 0.69. But the reason I brought up ZRE and this is they're both niche ETFs. They track particular indexes, particular investment strategies. As a result, you don't tend to see these funds have as low a fees as something like a, uh, let's just say BMO's S&P 500 ETF, uh, ZSP, which has fees of, you know, I think it's only nine basis points. So this is almost 600%, more than 600% of the fee. There's likely going to be higher fees in regards to this uh, just due to the trading expense ratio, but that, you know, the fund will have to uh, exist for quite a while to get a more accurate picture on those types of fees. Now, when we go down to the holdings, you're going to see a much different makeup than uh, another AI ETF, as I went over, like the Horizons Big Data ETF, which again, as I mentioned, it's not a pure play AI ETF. And actually, if we go up here to um, the actual fund holdings of that, so we can see here that you know, we have super microcomputer, we have CleanSpark, which I believe CleanSpark is a cryptocurrency company, if I'm accurate. Yeah, Bitcoin mining company. So uh, Secura Internet, Coinbase, crypto, uh, we got NVIDIA, all that type of stuff. A lot of these companies will be focused on, you know, providing hardware, NVIDIA, I mean, chips, all that type of stuff. NVIDIA is kind of a data and hardware combo, uh, but the crypto exposure is a bit different as well. Whereas when you look at this fund, I mean, this kind of looks almost like just a pure tech fund in terms of overall exposure. I mean, we, we have Alphabet, which is a 12% weighting, uh, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Meta, Broadcom, uh, AMD, Salesforce, Cisco. So we've got a bit of a mix of everything inside of this portfolio. I mean, if we look to Alphabet uh, in terms of AI, their search engines, things like that, they're doing a lot of stuff with Google search in terms of, you know, AI generated queries for users. They obviously have their Gemini platform. Um, which Apple, I believe, is looking to work with Alphabet on. We have NVIDIA, obviously, which is huge in terms of hardware for AI uh, functionality. They have the data centers, things like that. Meta is making big advancements in AI. Broadcom, you know, more of a chip provider, things like that. But overall, this fund is looking to at least, 
you know, right as of right now, give you exposure to the, you know, Mag7, big AI players in the space. I mean, Microsoft, again, is huge with chat GPT, things like that. So I find a lot of people may look to kind of find the diamonds in the rough in terms of AI exposure to try to get those big outsized gains when in reality this fund it's just focusing on the major players ones with a ton of cash flow to invest back into a the you know their ai segments things like that so this fund is going to be you know as of right now, focused on that. Now, in terms of geographical allocations, you could probably tell from the, the top holdings, but this is pretty much a pure play United States fund. Um, it has communications and, and tech, but it's it's pretty much a pure uh, technology fund. I believe even something like Alphabet, uh, Google, is classified as a communication stock, but in reality, it's, it's very much a technology stock. Uh, outside of that, we have very minimal exposure to uh, sectors outside of the United States. Overall, this just it seems to be a very interesting fund. I can't really speak much else on it just because it doesn't really have any performance. Um, it doesn't have any, you know, valuation metrics on a fund basis. So when we look uh, outside of the top 10 holdings, we can come down to the fund here and get the, we can go to the portfolio. We can head down here and get all of the holdings. I mean, for the most part, you're going to see some of the most popular names in US tech. I mean, even if we head down here, uh, Intel, IBM, uh, CrowdStrikes, uh, SM, Super Microcomputer, which, you know, if we look to uh, Horizons Big Data, that's the largest holding inside of it. Uh, if we go to what SMCI actually does, you can see Super Microcomputer provides high performance server technology services to cloud computing, data centers, big data, high performance computing, and the internet of things. So, I mean, this, this company has absolutely skyrocketed as of late. We can see, you know, it's up an absurd amount, but it's a smaller position in this portfolio as, you know, we're talking 0.7 versus, you know, 5.6 in terms of Horizon's big data ETF. This one aims to take more of an approach on the larger US tech companies, which you would think would make it less volatile. Obviously can't guarantee that. I mean, most of the weighting is in the mag seven, uh, or at least reasonable exposure. We're looking at 21, 31, 40, you know, over half the portfolio. Uh, if we factor in Broadcom and meta, you're looking at 65% of the portfolio is allocated to some gigantic companies, uh, whereas, you know, Horizons is, is, you know, crypto, smaller companies, things like that. So I would imagine, although I can't guarantee the fund has absolutely no history that this fund would be less volatile uh, than something like Horizons Big Data. But with the fund obviously only being around for a few months now, um, that's can't really tell. Overall, that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, I think this is a really unique fund and it's one that I have firmly stapled to my watch list. I, you know, would not be looking to add right now. I mean, when you do you take on significant risks that this fund really doesn't do all that well, especially with, with its unique approach to kind of using boosted.ai as like a sub advisor type situation. In my opinion, actively managed funds, uh, historical performance is pretty key. This doesn't have any, uh, I would want to see how they do moving forward. And there's also the added risk of the fact that this fund only has 2.3 million in AUM. Generally these funds, if they don't take off and assets under management doesn't grow materially, they tend to close down these funds. Uh, it's not like that would be, you know, any risk to your money. Like when the fund closed down, they, they would just simply, you know, liquidate the fund and give you your cash, whatever the value of your cash would be at the time that fund was rolled up. But a lot of the times these funds, you know, if they don't end up growing, uh, it's not worth it for them to manage the fund. So they just end up shutting it down. I mean, when you think of, you know, assets under management of 2.38 million, the fund is really only gathering at a 0.6% fee. They're only getting around $14,000 a year in management fees. So it certainly needs to grow uh, in order for it to stick around. But considering the, you know, the bullish nature of the AI sector, I wouldn't be surprised if this one grew. But I think, like I said, I think a lot of people have the same idea as me when it comes to actively managed funds. And they kind of want to see a bit of a history before they uh, take the plunge and buy into this thing. But overall, I mean, I'm very interested. I'm very bullish on AI. I think, you know, despite the sheer size and the revenue generation of a lot of these companies based on AI, I think we're very much in its infancy. I just wouldn't add this one at this time until we move forward, see a bit of history, but it's on my watch list. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this thing for quite some time. And 
As always, head down below, like the video, smash the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you find this fun very interesting in the comments below. Let me know if maybe you're willing to pull the trigger a bit early and buy it right now. Drop it in the comments below. Let me know what fund you want me to look over next. And in our next video, I'm going to be announcing the winner of the Stock Trades Premium subscription. It's a $300 a year platform, and you're automatically entered if you comment. If you comment on every one of our videos on the month, you get that many entries. And again, the ETF platform, very important that you head down below, sign up to the No BS newsletter, and we're going to drop some teaser emails, you know, a bit of a, a teaser over the next few weeks as to what we're going to offer, and you're not gonna wanna miss it.